So today I start my journey on preparing for the foreign medical graduate exam nation conducted by the MCI so I also thought that like if I prepare alone that would be kind of boring during this lockdown so why not prepare myself and also make this video so that all the aspiring students out there who are going to give the foreign medical graduate examination they can also see my videos and like learn something and also kind of prepare themselves for the upcoming examination so today i'm gonna study pathology i'm starting with pathology and let's see let's start with the basic concepts so the basic concepts when we study the first thing which comes in our mind is cell injury so the cell injury is any disease taking place at the microscopic level of the human body because the tissues are not functioning properly most commonly due to cell damage most common actually which we can see are due to some various reasons like for the first reasons i want to shed some light upon is physical factors which involves maybe the temperature for example now if the temperature gets high we can see burn injuries and if it gets low we can see frostbites now there are also various factors like chemical factors or infectious organisms which I'm going to be covering in microbiology which I'm going to do after this subject. So the most common question which comes regarding this topic is the most common cause of cell injury. Now the most common cause of cell injury is definitely going to be hypoxia. Now to understand hypoxia uh, let me get into some physiology about how things happen so here you can see the lungs we breathe in oxygen now from the lungs the oxygen enters into the blood vessel in that vessel there is a presence of hemoglobin so now hemoglobin gets combined with the oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin then oxyhemoglobin is transferred to the cells and then the cells utilize the oxygen so I have made it precise and easy and listed down four points which makes us understand it more easier so in using these points I can later list down the problems which we can see so the first point is air enters the lungs so if we try to imagine that what problem we can see if we focus on this point so the first thing that strikes our mind is that air which is entering the lungs has a deficiency of oxygen so when can that happen that can normally happen if the person is in a high altitude place so the f second question which we face is like you can see in your examinations you can get a question like if a person is in a high altitude or if a person is a trekker or a mountaineer what problem is he gonna face so the problem is going to be hypoxic hypoxia where the concentration of the oxygen in the air is very low so that's why the person is facing hypoxia so the second point we can see is that combination of oxygen and hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin so if we imagine what problems we can see if something goes wrong in this step so we can think about two things like one if the person is anemic or secondly like his hemoglobins are non-functional so how can his hemoglobin be non-functional it can be due to a few problems so how can his hemoglobin be non-functional we can see some examples like carbon monoxide poisoning where the carbon monoxide enters into our bloodstream and binds with the hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin so as we know that it is more it has more affinity to hemoglobin than oxygen so it can form more readily than oxyhemoglobin so that is a big problem and the second is the formation of met hemoglobin so these are the few problems we can see in anemic hypoxia now coming to the third point the third point is flow of oxygenated blood to the cells now if we imagine like what problems we can face 
if this goes wrong we can like so we can think about there is anything that is obstructing the blood flow or making it slow so it can be congestion so we can see ischemia over here so when this thing occurs we can call it as stagnant hypoxia so in stagnant hypoxia we can see that the blood flow is being slower due to some congestion so ischemia is happening so that is with the point three and so the fourth point we come across is utilization of the oxygen now if we imagine that the oxygen is glowing going now if we imagine that the oxygen is going to the cells but the cells cannot use the oxygen so what problem we can think about happening over here it may be for example cyanide poisoning where the cyanide interferes with cytochrome c and thus the cell cannot utilize the oxygen so and the last question that we can see in in the examination probably coming is the most common cause of hypoxia and that is definitely ischemia so revising the six questions the first question is most common cause of cell injury which is hypoxia the second question is going to be if a person is on a high altitude what problems will he be getting like which hypoxia so it will be hypoxic hypoxia the third question is going to be like if the person gets exposed to carbon monoxide formation like if there is poor ventilation and the person is using the room heater and he gets exposed to carbon monoxide so what problem he will be facing so that is anemic hypoxia and if there is congestion what hypoxia might the person be facing that is stagnant hypoxia and, and if there is a question saying that there is cyanide poisoning involving cytochrome c so the hypoxia will be histotoxic hypoxia and the last question will be most common cause of hypoxia that is ischemia